MEV is being considered one of the biggest threats to Ethereum right now and has been stealing value from under users' noses for quite some time. But now the problem is even bigger, and with over $700 million of value extracted over the past year, MEV could be the potential downfall of Ethereum and any other smart contract based blockchains. So today we're going to discuss what MEV is, how it can or already has affected you, and what the solution may be. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now MEV is a very loaded topic and I do want to make sure that we just cover the very high points so that you kind of understand what MEV is generally. So by definition, MEV is essentially the amount of money or value made by miners who randomly exclude, include, and reorder transactions in any block that they're able to mine. Now, MEV used to be referred to as minor extractable value, uh, but it is now referred to as like maximum extractable value, or even actually proposer extractable value for, you know, uh, proof of stake blockchains. Uh, but mainly just because of how much money is now being extracted from users like you and I. But MEV plays the biggest roles in DEXs like Uniswap, or even lending platforms like Aave, uh, in the form of arbitrage and liquidations. Now, usually this can be good because you really, in this case, MEV is kind of playing a role that these platforms, uh, you know, are intending for it to do. You know, where it be such as, you know, small amounts of arbitrage, or when someone needs to be liquidated, they get liquidated. Uh, however, there are more different examples where it can be a little more extreme and users can lose a lot more money um, than they usually would. So in that case, let's go ahead and take a look at an example provided to us by Paradigm. Thank you, Paradigm, uh, to show you how MEV kind of works. So let's imagine that there is a $10,000 arbitrage opportunity available on Uniswap after a large trade has caused a price slippage. An arbitrage bot notices the opportunity and submits a transaction to capture it, offering a $10 transaction fee to the miner. In this case, one of two things may happen. Number one, a miner will copy and censor the arbitrager's transaction in order to capture the opportunity themselves, or other bots will notice and bid a higher transaction fee, starting a bidding war with the right to capture the arbitrage. This auction is called a priority gas auction, PGA. That $10,000 potential profit is MEV, technically. That's the amount of money that essentially a miner, or in this case, uh, the, some of the bots, could make if they are able to catch that actual transaction, or you know, are able to kind of submit their transaction first. But in this case, if a miner doesn't capture it, then as we mentioned, a PGA is kicked off, and the difference between the price at which the auction settles and the total MEV available is the winning trader's profit. So in this case, if a $7,000 fee is paid to the miner, the, the remaining $3,000 is left, left to the trader. So you can see that in the long run, uh, users on Ethereum are hurt the most because these miners are incentivized to reorder transactions to get that sweet, sweet, uh, you know, arbitrage capital in this case. And then as for the bots, you know, when there is a bidding war, obviously, it increases the fees on Ethereum by a large amount, making the main chain way too expensive for users like you and I uh, to pretty much use. So now this scenario is, is really good at all. Uh, another example, and we're not going to go through it entirely, is going to be a blog post actually called The Dark Forest. Uh, by Dan Robinson and Georgios uh, Constantinopoulos. Uh, pretty much, essentially, it's about a little story about a user that kind of came up to, I think it was Dan, uh, and said, hey, you know, I sent my, I think it was, sent some coins to a uni the Uniswap contract address or something like that, and he thought it was gone. But it turns out that anyone could actually retrieve it. Uh, for some reason, wherever he sent it, if, if you call like a certain address, you're, if you or me or anyone could have retrieved it as long as you knew it was there. So these guys had to make sure that when they went ahead and retrieved that, that person's money, that the miners or any of these uh, PGA bots didn't see that transaction in the mempool first. Because what would have happened is if they would have tried to take it out, then the, bot, then the miners or the bots or whatever would have seen it and sniped it first. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. Um, I, I definitely highly recommend you read it. It's a very short blog post. Um, but... Listen, I barely read, and I thought that was, I thought it was pretty crazy. It's like, it's like a little movie almost. <laughs> but as you can see, all this stuff, it kind of looks like it happens behind the scenes, where it's like uh, miners, or, you know, in this case, maybe bots as well, uh, they seem to have that incentive of knowing what's going to happen uh, before the, the transaction is actually included on the main chain, right? Mainly kind of the access to the mempool is the main thing. So you never really know, you know, if you or yourself are going to be affected by this. But luckily, there's a website called sandwiched.wtf, uh, and it'll, it'll literally tell you if you've been a victim of front-running or any type of MEV action. Like, for example, if you got into a pre-sale and you were quoted a price, 
but your transaction never went through because of the gas fees being bid up. I'm sure a lot of you have gone through that if you've been any, in, in, in any of those uh, shitcoin auctions or whatever, those pre-sales. <laughs> so how can we fix it? How can we fix MEV? Well, there's two different types of ways to fix MEV just in general, the current state of it, right? Number one is minimization, which in this case is really just decreasing the miner's ability to actually perform that MEV in the first place, right? Just plain and simple, just trying to make it so that they can't perform it anymore. And number two is democratization. In this case, uh, giving everyone, users, traders, etc., uh, the same access to transactions pre-finality uh, that miners have. And this is going to be a little bit more of like the um, complicated one where essentially, I, you know, if you are a miner or maybe one of these bots or what have you, uh, you pretty much have access to a mempool uh, that although users technically like me could have access to, it's not like I can click a button and I can see it. You know what I mean? Um, you have to do. You have to go through a lengthy process of how to do it, and if you're not technical at all, you have no idea how to do it. <laughs> is how it is. So democratization is pretty much making the uh, what miners see accessible to everybody. So it's not just okay, miners can take advantage of it, and these guys can take advantage of it. It's really anybody can take. I guess yeah, really you kind of e evening out the playing field is really what it is. Now let's go into some of the potential solutions. Uh, most of which were actually proposed by Vitalik, but. Also, a good amount of them are being thought of and actually implemented by the community. Number one, give people an economic incentive to behave honestly or get slashed. Uh, obviously, this is kind of similar, I think, to what ETH 2.0 is bringing uh, once that merge happens. So that's really good. Or actually, technically, I mean, it should be already happening now with the um, beacon chain. So that's great. Uh, number two, maybe making transactions private. You know, in this case, encrypting them. So that after they've been committed, or, you know, in this case, before they've been executed onto the main chain, they can be decrypted, and we're good. You know, so in that case, no one miner or whatever can see what transaction is coming through and try to mimic it before it gets, you know, actually committed to the actual blockchain. Uh, so it kind of fixes the whole thing of, like, the unfairness of, uh, I guess you could say, undemocratization of that access to the mempool. So I think, I, I kind of like that, that idea the best, um, in my opinion. You can... Of course, try to make spam resistance like more relevant. In this case, like increase spam resistance. Uh, this would probably just help those auctions. Like in this case, it would kind of keep PGA bots from trying to like you know uh, bid up the price of the uh, gas fees. Uh, but I do think that when we're gonna get into it now, I think Flash bots kind of already did away with that kind of. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, as well as gas fees only paid if transactions succeed. Now this is gonna be a little bit kind of weird if you're not familiar. Uh, essentially, if you, we use you when you're on Ethereum and you try to make a transaction, if you try to submit a transaction and it doesn't go through, technically you do, you do still pay a gas fee. Um, and what we're saying here is that, you know, if your transaction doesn't go through, you shouldn't have to pay for anything, right? And honestly, I think that would just help everyone just saving more, a little, just a little more money, a little more shekels as well. So I really like that one too. Now, of course, obviously it's easy for me to list uh, all these solutions, but the hard part, of course, is actually implementing them. Uh, and one of the biggest teams behind the mitigation of MEV and, you know, trying out some of these solutions is actually Flashbots. So Flashbots is a research and development organization that's working to bring transparency to MEV activity, uh, democratize access to MEV revenue, and to re-enable fair redistribution of MEV revenue as well. Now, in this case, their focuses are on three different, I guess you could say verticals is what they call it. Uh, number one is Flashbots Auction, so a private communication channel between miners and searchers for transparent and efficient MEV extraction. Number two is Flashbots Data, so a suite of tools for increasing MEV transparency and reducing information as asymmetry. And number three, Flashbots Research, an open, transparent, and collaborative research effort to tackle short and long-term questions relevant to MEV. The last part, by the way, made this video a whole lot easier. Thank you for that information on the research. <laughs> and those, I feel like those first two, by the way, the Flashbots auction, Flashbots data, that stuff is more more along the lines of kind of kind of democratizing everything, which I really like. You know, um, I think that of course, just giving everyone the same amount of access to to the information is really really important, especially again educating people on what MEV actually is. But they also have a beautiful dashboard with a bunch of metrics to show you the effects. Uh, that MEV has had on Ethereum thus far. As I mentioned earlier, you can see that we're kind of over that $700 million mark in terms of how much uh, MEV has actually been generated, uh, which is which is pretty crazy. Again, especially if, if you've been involved in like uh, getting that stuff extracted from your own trades. Oof. 
That's different, bro. It hits differently. <laughs> Furthermore, though, there's a project such as Alchemist uh, working to combat front runners, of course, in this case, MEV, by using flashbots to claim the reward for you. Uh, so, again, although MEV is a huge problem, you know, some of the brightest and most talented projects right now are actually working on it, and they're, hoping they're working to shed light, as well as just making sure that research is being done so that solutions can come sooner rather than later. And, again, I do want to shout out Flashbots, uh, Alchemist, any project that's working on kind of killing the whole MEV thing right now, man, because I think it's going to be really important, honestly. At this point, it kind of goes without saying that there will always be just a little bit of MEV there, um, whether we can minimize it or democratize it, whatever it may be. Uh, but if we can minimize it just enough, just enough, uh, we might be able to save just a little bit of more ETH, you know, you and I. Uh, with that being said, again, like, like I mentioned earlier, we just scratched the surface of MEV today. I highly recommend you read some of the articles I mentioned, some of the stuff by Paradigm, some of the stuff by Vitalik, um, as well as watching the MEV.WTF Summit. I watched a little bit of that before I made this video, and yeah, it was definitely an interesting one. That being said, comment down below, do you guys think that MEV is a serious problem, or am I just bugging? Let me know, man. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.